a historic victory. And we must recognize that we made history that day when we expelled the Zionist ship from coming here and conducting commerce with the port of Auckland. And they had to go and reroute to Russia permanently since October of 2014. The making of history is a continuum and it's an accumulation of struggles that leads to qualitative shifts. And what we did that day was a qualitative shift. In 1937, David Ben-Gurion wrote to his son that, quote, we must expel the Arabs from Palestine and take their place and that Jerusalem must become Jewish only. And we must ensure that the Arabs of Palestine never return home. And so, that was the Zionist project that was created, many would argue, modeled after the Nazi project itself. And it is not a stretch to call the Israeli state that was established on the graves of our ancestors that they murdered is I am Nazi state. If we rejected Nazism and defeated it worldwide, not only because of its abhorrent anti-Semitic nature, but it's also because of its anti-human dimension. We must therefore recognize that Zionism and the Zionist project from its inception was built to annihilate the people and to establish supremacy and a foothold for empire. Initially it was the British Empire, then it was the French Empire, and now it's the American Empire. It is therefore really important to understand that when we situate our struggle in history, we have to be anti-imperialist. Yeah. At heart, we are an anti-imperialist movement. Right. Yeah. And, since, and since imperialism is the highest stage of capitalism. It is only natural that we ally ourselves with workers and labor unions, those whose labor has been extracted, their surplus labor is there to create profits for co corporations, such as those who trade with the Zim line, um, with the Zim line fleet, that fleet is one of the biggest fleets in the world, and Zim line is a co-founder of the State of Israel. It, it created, it, it played a very crucial role in supplying the Israeli gangs, the Zionist gangs at that time, with weaponry and supplies and all kinds of support in order to create Jewish-only kibbutzes, Jewish-only settlements in the land of Palestine. So, when we deliver a blow against Zimline, we're delivering a blow against the essence of the Zionist project. And for that, we are making history. Brothers and sisters, the history in which we participated was not created by us. It is true that the Zionist program, as early as the 30s and 40s, began its genocidal campaign 
leading to the ethnic cleansing and the murder of a total of 2 million Palestinians until now. 20% of the Palestinian population has been incarcerated. 40% of all Palestinian men have been imprisoned and tortured. And to draw this context, we also have to understand that not only that we stand on the shoulders of the Palestinian people who struggle for freedom, but we also stand on the shoulders of the student uprising in Soweto. And we stand on the shoulders of people like Stephen Biko and other martyrs, including Hassan Kenafani and the people who have fought for the freedom of their people against empire and against settler colonialism. Those who stood in solidarity with the uprising in Soweto are none but the International Longshore Workers Union. Yeah, so it is only natural. As early as the 1960s, the ILWU refused to cross a picket line in solidarity with the American Committee on Africa that was organizing against the apartheid. And in 1984, the ILWU, and particularly Local 10, refused to unload a South African ship that was carrying blood merchandise from the apartheid states of the Republic of South Africa. In 2010, we were approached by the ILWU to have a joint statement given to Local 10 by the Palestinian community here in the Bay Area and the Answer Coalition. And we went there, and we gave that statement, and we made the case of why it is important to take a stand again. And it was in June 2010 that, that the first action of Block the Boat took place at the Port of Oakland. And we stopped the unloading of the Zimliner for one day. But we knew that a single picket line was not going to stop the commerce with Zim. So we had to come back again in 2014, and it was the death blow that we delivered to commerce with Zim at the port of Oakland that ultimately diverted the Zim liner from coming here. In closing, I want to say, that not only that we stand on the shoulders of the struggling people of Palestine and the struggling people of Soweto and South Africa, but we must remember that we have a project. And our project is the liberation of Palestine from Zionism. Yeah. Yeah. The, liberation, the liberation of the whole of Palestine means the liberation of 300 million Arabs from subjugation to U.S. empire and imperialism as a whole. And therefore, the way we dealt that blow against Zimliner once and for all, we need to deal the same blow against the Zionist project once and for all, so that Palestine will be free from the river to the sea. Thank you.